They grabbed me and threw me out on the sidewalk. Beaten and bloodied. Four guys jumped on me. Right outside his own home. Finally, one guy pulled out a knife and I figured this is it. A 71-year-old living in fear after trying to do the right thing. My God, I'm lucky I'm alive. The safety steps Denver Housing Authority now plans to take. This is happening because people got the shot. Colorado ditching face covering rules in many settings. Hell yeah, like that's so exciting. And not everyone is ready to go bare face just yet. Anything could happen. You could contract anything. We're running down what you need to know about mask and social distancing rules this weekend. Tonight, this 71-year-old is recovering from serious injuries. He says he was beaten by his own neighbors right outside his apartment. Good evening. Welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Thank you for joining us tonight. David Gunn says it all started because he tried to record some unruly behavior at his apartment complex. And as our CB Cotton reports, Denver Housing is now taking a hard look at safety on its properties. David Gunn is straightforward about how this week's been. It scared the hell out of me. He's not only scared, he's scarred in a way he'll never forget. I'm going, my God, I'm lucky I'm alive. I said they were going to kill me. Gunn turns 72 next month, but it's a birthday he wasn't sure he'd make. On Tuesday, he says he was violently attacked outside his apartment, located here in the Quig Newton Homes complex. I was at the hospital till seven the next morning. Gunn has lived at the Denver Housing Authority complex for a little over three years. He says in recent months, he's been bombarded with loud partying, so he spoke to property management. The manager said that she wants me to get it on recording, and then she asked who's doing it. And she said, then we can act on it. So on Tuesday night, Gunn says he stood in his doorframe with his cell phone to record what he saw outside. And that's when things went south. Two guys walk up and they go, you're not filming us, and started walking for me. And they grabbed me and threw me out on the sidewalk. My head went down, and today I found out I got a crack here. Gunn says for almost two minutes, five men and two women stood over him, punching, biting. You can see where, like that. And at one point, he says someone pulled a knife on him. And I figured this is it. He says he was eventually able to break away, get back inside, and call 911. Denver police confirmed to Denver 7 there's an open and active investigation, but so far, no arrests have been made. In a statement to Denver 7, the Denver Housing Authority said in part, DHA staff is working with the police department and witnesses to determine what transpired and how to proceed. In addition, we will be engaging the resident council board and the police department to discuss ongoing safety initiatives to the benefit of the community. In the meantime, Gunn says he'll stay straightforward about how he feels. I'm scared to live there. In Denver, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. And our Denver 7 Gives Fund is now paying for a hotel, so David has a safe place to stay for the next few days. Masks are about 50% 50, 50 effective in reducing the spread of the virus. Uh, well, that's a poor man's vaccine. Turns out the vaccine is 95% effective. Of course, Governor Jared Polis today, he is announcing an end to the state's mask mandate in most settings. Now, this marks a big change for all of us, so let's get you up to speed here. The first thing to know, there are some exceptions. You still need to mask up at child care centers, emergency and long term care facilities, as well as prisons and jails. And those rules will stay in place through June 1st. Apollo said Colorado is advising not requiring that unvaccinated people keep wearing masks indoors when they're in a group with more than 10 people. And this all comes a day after the CDC recommended fully vaccinated people could skip the mask in most indoor and outdoor settings. And Colorado cities and counties still have the power to set their own pandemic rules. Today, Denver's mayor announced the city will fall in line with state mask guidance. He also announced that Denver will move to what's called level clear on Sunday. That means ending capacity caps and distancing rules at restaurants, gyms and other businesses. This is a major shift for businesses after more than a year of restrictions. Other metro counties, including Jefferson, Adams and Arapahoe, also plan to move to level clear on Sunday. And this encouraging news about the mask requirement should be tempered, though, by Colorado's actual case numbers. We had 1,565 new cases reported today. What's more, our state now leads the country in most cases per 100,000 residents. I talked about this today with Dr. Beth Carlton with the Colorado School of Public Health. She said, our numbers are bad, and these should, should be a wake-up call to the non-vaccinated. Any other time during the pandemic, yeah. 
you see those sort of numbers, especially in comparison with the other states, you go, I'm a little worried. Yep. I am worried, just to be clear, I'm worried about the people who are not vaccinated or the people who, like me, have been vaccinated but aren't still aren't two weeks out from their shot. Right. Um, And I think what my fear about this guidance is that um, those who are not fully vaccinated will think that the, the show is over, too, you know, that the pandemic is over. And for all of us who are not in the fully vaccinated category, this pandemic is very real. And if you're in Colorado, it's really risky. Today, the state health department said an estimated one in 81 Coloradans is infected and spread is happening, they say, at a high level. It says the course of the pandemic really hangs on the next few weeks and how much success our state has with vaccinations and controlling the spread. Another thing to keep in mind, businesses can still ask you to wear a mask while you're out shopping. And today, Governor Polis asked Coloradans to respect those decisions. King Supers, Home Depot, Starbucks say they will keep mask mandates in place for shoppers and staff. Meanwhile, Walmart, Trader Joe's and Costco say fully vaccinated customers will not be required to wear a mask. Walgreens and CVS say they are reviewing their mask policies. We have some good news for the Rockies and their fans today announced uh, Coors Field will be host to 35,000 fans starting June 1st. The current cap is just over 21,000. As for indoor events, right now anything with a crowd of more than 500 people will require special approval from state health leaders. All right, so now we've got a pretty good picture of how this will work in our state. How are you feeling about it? That's another question. On Denver 7, Sloan Dickey is catching up with Coloradans facing this big change after more than a year of masking up. These are images from 2021. In fact, these are images from today, Friday, May 14th. And one thing is very different from the day before. It's nice to see smiles again. Naked smiles are now allowed as masks are no longer required at Blake Street Tavern. Just moments after Governor Polis said this. Today we are not celebrating the end of the pandemic, but we're celebrating an important milestone. A milestone that really turns over that individual responsibility of mask wearing to the people of Colorado. The Blake Street Tavern tweeted this, saying they're no longer requiring visitors to wear masks, and they'll use the honor system to enforce who is vaccinated and who is not. It's only been a few hours and people are giddy. They're just giddy. The CDC announced on Thursday that fully vaccinated people can ditch their masks in most settings. On Friday, the state of Colorado followed suit, lifting the statewide mask mandate and advising but not requiring unvaccinated people to wear a mask. Health officials say that nearly 40% of the state is fully vaccinated and they estimate as many as 80% of the state intends to get one. Even the thought of us being able to open up back to 100% is fantastic. Denver is also headed for an end to social distancing this weekend, entering level clear. The distinction will allow smaller restaurants and bars like the First Draft Brewery to fill their spaces to 100% capacity once again. My staff's all looking forward to it. We're really hyped down here and really excited to get rolling again. For most of us used to mask for more than a year. I don't necessarily think the world is ready to be mask free. It's a strange new world. I feel a bit uncomfortable. I mean, I think the past year we've all been sort of conditioned, walk out of the house, walk in a place, mask up. Restaurant managers say they're prepared for all different kinds of expectations when it comes to safety and social distancing. We are always still sanitizing all of our high touch areas. I think the QR codes are here to stay. The contactless paying is awesome. But for many, this weekend is the moment they've been waiting for since the pandemic reached Colorado more than a year ago. I think people are ready to party. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. He's in the refrigerator now, but he had, he's got mold growing on his face. A basement full of unsettling sights. We've got to remember that these people belong to somebody. Bodies badly decomposed. I also have an arrest warrant for you and for you. Now a county coroner, his wife facing charges. Denver 7 investigates is looking into why he's still cashing a government paycheck. We had some storms today. I expect a lot more over the weekend.